God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father God, we thank you. We enter into your courts with praise. God, we come before you just to tell you how wonderful you are, just to tell you how good you are. God, you brought us from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. And God, we tell you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Knowing that if it had not been for you, oh God, where would we be? But God, we can raise our hands right now and tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him thank you. He woke us up this morning. Thank you. He started us on our way. Thank you. Glory and honor be to God. God, you're so awesome. And you're so wonderful, God. God, we give all that we have unto you. God, we give you our praise. God, we give you our thanks. We honor you, God, for all that you've done. And God, we ask that you would continue to bless this service today, God. Bless the man, our pastor, who's going to stand behind the sacred desk and break the bread of life. God, let us receive everything that you have for us, God. Let us know, God, that truly you are still on the throne and you are ruling all things. And we thank and praise you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise. Let's give him some honor. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He deserves all of our honor. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we lift you. We magnify your name. There is nobody like you. There is nobody greater. There is body more awesome. You are our deliverer. You are our way maker. You are our strong tower. You are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah, we bless you. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We are
Can we elevate our hands and worship in this place? He's a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels, they bow before him. Let heaven and earth adore him. That's not just a statement for today, but that requires action. Let heaven and earth adore him. Before we move from this place as our praise and worship ministry is come to create an atmosphere of worship conducive to receive what God has for us today, I want us to take a moment and just elevate our hands look toward heaven and glorify the God of our creation the God that has granted us with life, health and strength the God that has set destiny and purpose in our lives the God that orchestrated our salvation through Jesus our Lord Worship the God that empowered us with his Holy Spirit. Come on, worship the God that made us a promise. He made us a promise that one day we will go back with him when he comes back for his church. I want to know, is there a church here? that can worship him for who he is. Come on, worship the God of our salvation. Come on, worship the God of our salvation. We thank him today. We glorify him. We glorify him. We thank you. Today commemorates the beginning of Holy Week. This day is marked as the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and as he came into the city Thank you. they took off their coats and they placed palms in the street as he came and they were praising him and they were worshiping him some of them through misconception, hoping that he would come and deliver them from the Roman government, but he was coming to save them from their sins. Before we move, would you look down your road, tell your neighbor, say, I thank God he came to save me from my sins. You might worship him because he healed you. You might worship him because he put money in the bank. You might worship him because he opened doors, but I worship him because he saved me from my sins. They saw them worshiping, told Jesus to tell them to be quiet, silence this praise, silence this noise. He said, if these should hold their peace, he said, the rocks will cry out. He spoke that not in literal sense, but to simply say this, there's no way I can tell them to be quiet. It's no way I can tell them to shut their mouth. There's no way that I can tell them to be quiet and sit down because God has done something and what is about to happen in their life in the next few days is going to change oh my god tell somebody my life is about to be changed my life is about to be changed and he couldn't get them to be quiet they kept on praising him and i just want to know do i have an upper room church that says today i can't keep quiet look down your road and say i can't i can't be quiet today it, don't send an usher down my road I don't need a circle around. 
I don't need the preacher to tell me, sit down, sit down. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I brought my praise with me. You can give me a little keys on the stage. Tell somebody, I brought my praise with me. I brought my praise with me. Tell your neighbor, say, I might not have, I might not have a, a, a tree or a branch or a leaf, but I got my hands. Tell them, say, I got my mouth and I got my feet. Anybody feel like letting your feet testify real quick? Why don't you clap your hands real quick and give God a... While you're praising, just throw your hands up. I'm not going to tell anybody to not praise, but just try to encourage somebody. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, say the Lord's been good to me. And I can't hold my peace. Some of y'all act like you woke yourself up. somebody to save you you needed somebody to reach way down and pick you up you needed somebody to wash you white as snow Throw your hands and give God a praise. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. Wave your spiritual branches. Hallelujah. 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 Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Take your seats. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Sing it. Blessed be the rock. Blessed. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on.
going to sing it again. Now, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Come on, bless it. Bless it be the rock of my salvation. Clap your hands and give God praise. God bless you. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Glad to be worshiping in the upper room. And we celebrate those that are worshiping with us via streaming can we welcome our viewers our online viewers come on let's thank god for them god bless you and thank you for joining us uh today in worship and we are excited to be in god's house we know that the lord has sent a word here and we wait with great expectation to hear what the lord has for us on today Amen. Are there any visitors, those that are joining us on today? If you're here in the house, would you stand? We want to acknowledge those that are worshiping. First time uh, visitors, if you're here, would you stand? We just want to give you some love. Amen. Amen. We have a brother in the back. Amen. Is there anyone else? Amen. Upper room, let's show some love. Let's show some love. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We thank you, and we thank you for worshiping with us. Yes, we just want to show you some love. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God, amen, for you being here. Listen, we have a lot going on, amen, in the body of Christ here at the upper room. We are, we are a busy church. Tell somebody, we are a busy church. Amen. There's a lot going on, and we want to share those things with you in our announcements, please turn your attention toward our screens. Don't turn your attention toward the screens. Amen. Um, are we just flashing some of the things? All right, flash and I'll talk. Today is Palm Sunday. And on Thursday, we have our Monday Thursday service where we will uh, commune with the Lord. And there also will be feet washing on Thursday. Amen. How many of you came last year to that service? It was a powerful service and we're going to do it again. Amen. And also, what else do we have? Uh, that is this, when is this? Friday night, right? Friday night, Good Friday uh, the uh, Miami Fort Lauderdale, y'all see I don't do this often, right? The Miami Fort Lauderdale Region Quarterly Gathering will be uh, our Good Friday evening service there at uh, multi Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God in Christ. Lord, I should have called somebody up here to do this. Amen. And our host uh, pastor is Dr. Roger Grimes, and he will be speaking. Amen. So we will be there this afternoon at 5 to 6.30 via Zoom, our quarterly uh, creative church workshop, uh, prophetic pioneering and evangelistic engineering. Tune in uh, today at 5 p.m. for this uh, uh, with our regional leader, Pastor Eric Thomas. Amen. Please tell me that's the last announcement. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's pack this place out Sunday. Uh, let's bring somebody, bring your entire family. Amen. We're going to worship together on Sunday. Amen. And we're looking forward to a high time. That is it, right? Amen. Amen. Y'all know y'all bishop, he, he don't do this too often now. Y'all done retired me from some of these duties. Amen. We thank God. Let's praise God for our announcements. Amen. Uh, I want to do this while I'm standing, amen, because I'm so ready to hear the word of God. It's offering time. Can we do that so we can move swiftly toward, amen, uh, hearing the word of God? I'm, I'm excited about our future. Somebody say our future. 
futures must be invested in. In order to have a future, you must invest in it. And Upper Room has a great future ahead of us. I see and I look and see our youth and see what the Lord is doing in our youth that, that let me tell you something, Upper Room Ministries is here to stay. I'll say it again so y'all can praise God. Upper Room is here to stay. Amen. A part of us coming together, we give to God the first fruits, we give our tithe, we give our offering, but today I want you to give in mind of investing in your future today. I want you to look at your seed today as an investment in your future, in your children, in your children's children, in the children that you don't even have, amen, in your neighborhood and in your community. There's some great things that are happening here. There's some great things that the Lord has afforded us to connect with. And I want Upper Room mem members today, I want you to sow into it. This is what I want you to do. I want tithers, and right now I want you to stand. I want, want all of our tithers. We want to celebrate the tithers, the covenant givers in this house. Can we praise God for them? Tithers, where are you? We want to celebrate you. Let's praise God for our tithers. Amen. As you prepare your tithe, amen. And I'm going to ask the membership, all, everyone in the room, if you can do this today, could you get that seed of $40 and stand today? I need everybody to partner with us today. Uh, get that seed of $40 and begin to stand. Let's do it quickly. Amen. When offering time comes, offering time comes. It shows up at a certain time in worship. Amen. And because it does, we know to be ready amen to give so i want you to do it now thank you thank you those in the bank our new membership they're standing god bless you amen i want you to stand amen i want every person to get a seed in your hands and i want you to begin to stand amen 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 i will pray when everyone is standing amen thank you thank you y'all are so sweet amen y'all are so sweet amen I want you to take your gifts that you have in your hand and I want you to lift them and say, Lord, I give you my best and I know you'll give your best back to me. What kind of giver does he love? A cheerful giver. Amen. Into the hands of our ushers.
Thank you for your giving. Can we clap our hands and praise the Lord? Amen. For the seeds that have been sown. It is time for the word of God. It's time for us to hear from heaven. We are blessed to have right here in this house an anointed voice. God has given us in the person of our executive pastor. Amen. Pastor Eric Thomas. Amen. I know the Lord has given him something for us, something to start us on this week's journey as we journey to Resurrection Sunday. I know that the Lord is going to deposit something in our spirit to encourage us, to enlighten us, to see Jesus more and more. Could you point your hands that way and say, Lord, bless our speaker today. Anoint him afresh. Use him and get the glory out of his life. Amen. After our music ministry has come with the selection, we want you to receive and stand on your feet today. And let's celebrate the gift that God has given us in the person of, amen, Pastor Eric Thomas. Amen. We're going to worship God just a little bit more. Amen. Y'all all right with that? Giving him some honor, some praise. Amen. Ooh, Lord, we honor you, God. But we lift your name high. Ain't nobody like you, Lord. Can't nobody do for us what you do. So we praise you and we worship. Hallelujah. worship. Give you the praise. 
as you continue to play, join hands. Let's pray together and ask God's blessing upon our time in the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. I ask for preaching grace that will shake the foundations of our souls, Father, and bring deliverance. Bring someone into contemplation, into a place of yield and surrender to say yes to you today, Lord. Let those of us that have already said yes to you recommit to you and give you another yes. Help me preach this the way you, you gave it to me, and I'll give you the glory. I'll give you the honor. We arrest all other consciousness in this room. Any agendas that will set out to hinder the progress of God's word, we set ourselves against you now. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you that the power of the gospel cannot be stopped. It will penetrate every listener in Jesus' name. Will you squeeze that hand and tell your neighbor, God's going to do it for you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Right where I stand, I am saved. I am sanctified. Feel and being filled with the Holy Ghost. I've got a burning fire. And I'm going to run on to see what the end's going to be. Is that your testimony? If you're glad you're saved, clap both of your hands real strong. Amen. God has gifted us a person that I admire and respect so very much. I've had several pastors I respect and I've been submissive to all of them. None has captured my heart the way that Bishop Mark Antonio Cooper has. He's a caring man. He cares about your progress and our progress. I'll wait. I'll wait. You can take my preaching time. I'll wait. I'll wait. I said I'll wait. I'll wait. We have a great leader. We have a great leader. Thank God for his lovely wife. Amen. The person of evangelist Joy Cooper. I'll wait for you as well. God has blessed us. Dr. Brunell Campbell is second to none. And her leadership and her influence, we thank God for her. All our elders, all ministers, all missionaries, our deacons, everyone. Um, I'm going to do this very quickly uh, because I was taught you don't play on the train track when the train is coming. There's a train coming on Easter Sunday. So, I'm play on these tracks just a little bit. Rest on your feet and turn your Bible to the book of St. John, chapter number 18, and then find verse number 40. If you pray for me, I could do this really, really, really quick. If you pray for me, will you pray for me? Say, I'm praying for you, E.P. Matthew saw him as a king, and he first him in the kingdom and then Mark saw him as a, a man and he mentioned him as a servant Luke saw him as a teacher John called him the preeminent one who was and he is and he is to come in the 18th chapter uh, in the 40th verse then cried they all all of them cried all of them, not some of them, all of them cried again, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. I want to preach really quickly about perverted preferences. Give us Barabbas. Be seated. The late third century scholars, early 4th century scholars called this particular day and week, Palm Sunday, Holy Week. 
Holy Week, where Jesus is making his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And on Monday, he's going to do a little house cleaning and clean the temple. Aren't you glad that Jesus will do that for your church? He'll come by and uh, he will turn things over. Uh, on Tuesday, he has Bible study. And he does some final Tuesday night teaching on his preeminence. Uh, Holy Wednesday is the day that actually Judas betrays him. He's already starting to work out his plan that was in his heart all the time. Perverted preferences. On Thursday, it wasn't just dinner, it wasn't just supper, it was the last time Jesus would sit with his disciples and this is where Judas is actually uncovered because in that setting, Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me. Could you imagine sitting in that setting and hearing Jesus say that, that someone actually has the nerve and the audacity to betray Jesus? Peter says, how do you know this? He says, it's always a sign. There's always a little sign. You tell people with perverted preferences. He says, when I dip my bread into my cup. Watch what he does. He does the same thing. Now this goes so contrary against what we have been told that flattery is the best form of Im uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. What well, Jesus says, I ain't flattered. Because people with perverted preferences have no identity. So you often find them mimicking because they don't really know who they are. And they actually find, it's so crazy to me, they, they mimic people that they really don't like. Well, here we are, here we are, Judas doing exactly what Jesus, and Judas thought he was fooling everyone by imitating. And here's Peter. Could you imagine the, 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 the sweat in the palm of his hand? Because Peter also has been told, you are going to deny me. Peter couldn't fathom that because he does have an affinity for Jesus. But Peter says, I would never, I would never, ever deny you. So many people doubt you. Y'all know that song. I can't live without you. That is why I love you so because you, you're real to me, Jesus. Jesus, you remember I got that question right in Matthew 16. Who do men say that I am? You remember all the other disciples got it wrong. You remember Jesus, I got it right. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, you do remember what I said to that, right? Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. It was my father. Yeah, even perverted preferences get it right sometimes. Even perverted preferences know scripture. Mm -hmm. And so here we are. We're in this Passion Week, and, 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 and that's another name for passion. And I, I, I wrestled with that. Well, why would it be called passion? So I, I went to the text, and I looked for, for, for demonstrations of passion because who knows with an impending death, who, who would have passion to run to crucifixion? Who is in a hurry to die? I'm doing everything in my power not to die. Going to the gym every day, y'all ain't saying nothing. I eat pretty good, y'all ain't saying nothing. I drive pretty safe. I'm doing everything I know to do, Elder Terrence Jones, to keep my life. But how is it? How is it that this is called passion? Jesus is rush, rushing to suffering. In a moment, we're going to see Jesus have three parts of his body mixed together. His blood his sweat, and his tears. Oh, that's the proof of passion. I don't need your lip service. Jesus says, if there's real passion, I'll see three things. I'll see your blood. Blood represents life. It's, it says, I have given my life to this. Oh, God, help me to preach this the way you gave me. I said, we give our lives to this. The way that we serve God most recently especially post-COVID, it's real like volunteerism. Like, I, I 
lift my hand this week, Lord, but next week, I'm going to be on vacation. <laughs> we need more passion in the church. It's, 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 it's blood, but it's also sweat. Sweat comes from labor. It, it, our theme has been given to us this year, we got work to do. I, it's not just to thank you for that clap. I appreciate it, Michael Matt. The rest of y'all are clapping a minute. I said, we've got work to do. For the world is hungry for the living bread. There, there, are, there are people dying every day. But hunt your neighbor and tell your neighbor, yes, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. And Jesus did work. He did the work. And, and then there's tears. There's tears. There's tears that comes with this work. There's tears that comes with this work because it's hard to give yourself to people who don't really want you. Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. That hurts. That hurts to do ministry, sacrificial, voluntarily. I'm giving my life to this, to people who don't want. One theologian called this a week, not a holy week. He didn't call it a passion week. He said this was a week of denials and trials. Some of us have faced that kind of life, a life of denials and trials. Here it is. Here it is, our text, John chapter number 18, follows chapter 17, of course. What happens in chapter number 17 is Jesus just prayed for his disciples. That's the Lord's prayer. Not our Father, thou who art in heaven. That's our prayer. The Lord's prayer. His final prayer to the Lord. He prays for his disciples. He prays, Lord, don't, don't let them get weary. Don't let them fall out now, Lord. He says, uh, I've redeemed them. I've already, he hadn't even gone to the cross. I've redeemed them. I've already redeemed them because it's a week of denials and trials. I've already I've already redeemed them. Peter hasn't denied me yet, but I've already redeemed them. Judas has not betrayed me quite yet, but I've already redeemed them. Jesus is now moving into his prophesied pending death, and uh, he's now going to be tried. And these trials are actually really, really fickle. Read it when you get home. Chapter number 18, he goes through six trials. All of them are illegal. N none of them are legit. The first trial, he, 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 he's called, he's arrested and, and taken to a high priest, former high priest named Annas. Did you hear what I just said about Annas? He's a former high priest. He had been a high priest for about 16 years and recently emeritized. But for some reason, he thought things should still come by him. I'm reminded of that great gospel preacher, E. Dewey Smith, who tells the story when he was first called to traveler's rest in Atlanta, Georgia, that one of the old heads called him then said, uh, you have yet to come by my office and kiss my ring. As to say, you don't have passage here until I validate you. I, he do his words. He says, I'll come by and kiss your ring when you come by my office and kiss my, well, uh, Anias makes you feel like that. Anias is past his prime and past his time. And because he has no jurisdiction, he has court at his house. Y'all know how folk have court at their house. You know how they have assembly at their house. You know how folk have their, their little meeting, Zoom, and, and FaceTime, and actually sipping wine, talking about judgment on God's people. That's what Annas did. He says, I ain't got no real authority, so y'all got to come over here to my house where I feel safe and protected. I'm preaching about folk with preferred, uh, perverted preferences. Now, he, he actually does have a son-in-law, Siophis, who's where Jesus goes next. Now, Siophis has perverted preferences because he's already made his mind up. 
No authority. He's a high priest. He has no authority, but he's already made his mind up that Jesus should be put to death. Isn't it just like folk with perverted preferences have already made their... I don't know much about them, but I just don't like them. Have already written you off. <laughs> perverted preferences. They beat Jesus, they slapped him, and, and, and Siaphis was so, uh, so gangster. He says, uh, my dad, my father-in-law let you go. Uh, you're going to stay in the house tonight. He kept him in the palace, and then the next day, he had to go to the church, the Sanhedrin, and stand before the congregation. And the congregation started pulling out their Bibles and saying, you and your funky little doctrine of grace, we don't like it. We like killing people. You let that girl go the other day that was caught in adultery. We, 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 she, she was caught in the act. I ain't talking about a rumor, mothers. She was caught in the act. We, we set that thing up nice and you, you let her go. How, how dare you let this, this girl go? How, how, how dare you let that woman at the well with, with her five husbands and the man she was with, that wasn't her man. How dare you? How dare you give her living water where she'll never thirst again? But they realize we can't put him to death. Tell your neighbor, they can't kill you. Uh, they, they could try, but they can't kill you. So they had to elevate it and send it to the political leaders. Pontius Pilate. Uh-huh. Pontius Pilate. He was standing before Jesus early in the morning. Early. They had to do it before daybreak so nobody would really see these illicit, illegal trials. Uh, he, he, he says, he says um, uh, well, I, I, I don't find no fault in them. Let me ask public opinion. <laughs> Pontius Pilate had already been warned by his wife, have nothing to do with this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if she had gone to the, the prophetic dream series or not. I don't know. But in the middle of the night, uh, an angel talked to her and said, tell your husband don't have nothing to do with this. Uh, there's some folk, y'all got enough Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Tell some folk, I don't want nothing to do with that. Boo. And so Pontius says, well, I'll just give it to public opinion. And, and, and they said, well, well, let's, let's send him to Herod. I'm almost done. Let's send him to Herod because he did call Herod a silly fox. Because they told him, they told him in Luke uh, chapter number 18, they said, do you not know Herod seeks to kill you? And he said, you go tell that silly fox that today, tomorrow, and the third day, I'm going to do what God called me to do. Herod judged him, and, and he says, but I can't really do anything with him. So he sends him back to Pilate. Pilate says this next time, he says, Jesus, why won't you defend yourself? He says, don't you know that they want to take your life? Oh, my favorite part of this story, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Otherwise, we'd fight. Y'all got to get what Jesus was saying. That was so gangster. He was saying, listen, this is a spiritual battle because if it were physical, we'd already take you out. Listen, there are some Negroes you could have taken out a long time ago. Let me see y'all that still got a little bit of fight in you. There are some folk you could have snatched their whole weave out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But it was the Holy Ghost that kept you because this ain't a, this is a spiritual thing. This is a, there's some folk I walked by in my office. I wanted to push their whole desk over, but I had to remind them this is a spirit. This is a spiritual. This is a spiritual. There's folk I wanted to back over in my vehicle. Excuse me, Sister Walton. But then I remembered, I remembered this ain't physical. This is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I got power. Don't mistake my silence. Don't think this silence is weak. I'm praying in the spirit. You better watch how you treat some folk. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Folk that ain't saying nothing back at you don't mean that they're passive and they're punkish. There's some prayer warriors in here. 
My mom used to write names down. Y'all ain't said, I read her prayer journal. She write names down, turn their intestines inside out, and then she'd have Psalms 88 there. I said, it's in the word. Turn their intestines, Lord, inside out. Because it's hard. It's hard dealing with people with perverted preferences. And so here we are. With Jesus, it's been coupled before the public opinion with a man by the name of Barabbas. And Pilate said, I'm going to give you a choice. That's what salvation is. It's a choice. I decided... To make Jesus <laughs> my choice. Tell your neighbor, he's still my choice. <laughs> Look at another neighbor and say, he's still my choice. So he stands there before the people and he tells the people, I put two people before you, you choose one. Here is Jesus. Mm, mm the king of the Jews, and Barabbas. And you would think that people would have come to their senses by now. But they said, we don't want Jesus. Give us Barabbas. I wrestled with this. I, I literally turned my Bible over, and I turned my notes over because I have so much tension right here. Because somebody could stop this. And he didn't. It was Barabbas. Barabbas could have stopped this whole thing because Barabbas was guilty. Look at your neighbor and say, you were too. <laughs> Bar Barabbas had done what they said he had done. Barabbas is the first star in the movie, How to Get Away with Murder. Uh-huh, and he is the first one who ever created citywide insurrection. And Barabbas could have stopped this. I'm mad with Barabbas. I stopped pre I went for a drive mad with Barabbas. And then I felt as if Barabbas was sitting in my car with me and said these four words. And then we're going to ride. He took my place. Here's why. Barabbas didn't say anything because Romans 5 and 6 says, for when we were yet without strength and in due time, Christ, he took my place, died for the ungodly. For scarcely he took my place for a righteous man. Would one die, he took my place. Yet peradventure for a good man. He took my place. Would one even dare to die? Did you, did you hear what that said? Scarcely he took my place. For a righteous man, would someone raise their hand? He took my place and say I would die. Maybe he took my place. Perhaps even for a good man. Bishop Kutu is a good man. But perhaps someone would even say I would die he took my place but God commended his love toward us he took my place in that while we were yet sinners he took my place Christ died he took my place for us and not only did he die for us died as us. He took my place. I was sinking deep in sin. He took my place. Far from the peaceful shore. He took my place and very deeply stained within. But the master he took my place out of the sea. He took my place. My despairing cry from the waters. He took my place. He lifted me 
now say he took my place shake a neighbor's hand and say he took my place aren't you glad aren't you glad he took your place he was rejected and scorned among men took my place but while I was doing my thing he took my I'm going to my seat now to look back over your life uh, and think things over uh, and high five three people uh, and say he took my place. Uh, he took my place uh, he took me. he Why don't you throw your hands up and say, he took my place. Everybody jump on your feet and say, he took my place. So here's the thing. I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Lean back and say, oh, 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 I'm glad, so glad, so glad, so glad he took my place, so glad he died for me, so glad on Calvary, see it. Clap your hands and give God praise. There's a lot of folk that have perverted preferences. That's why the songwriter said silver and gold, silver and gold. I'd rather <laughs> have Jesus than silver or gold. Fame or fortune or riches untold. Just put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and say, I'd rather have Jesus. Tell him, say, you can have this whole world, but give me Jesus. <laughs> Clap your hand and say, give me Jesus. Come on, give me Jesus. If just for a moment we can rewrite history we have an opportunity because we already know the end of the story they asked for Barabbas but I wish I had an upper room church that would change the narrative and say give me Jesus give me Jesus come on come on come on come on come on say I'd rather have Jesus in my life I'd rather have Jesus in my home I'd rather have Jesus in my heart. Come on, come on. I dare you. Would you clap your hands for the word of God? I'm going to ask that our executive pastor that he would come back. He's going to lead us into a word of prayer and conclude this day in the time of prayer. I believe there's somebody that would like to change their answer. <laughs> there might be somebody that wants to change their response and check the right box. 
I'm choosing Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened. And because of it, he's made our life brand new. Let's receive our executive pastor as he leads us into and let's celebrate the word of God that we received today. You can have this whole world, but give me Jesus. You can have this whole world, but give me Jesus. You can have this whole world, but give me Jesus. No turning back. I buy it. Will turn the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. Lift your hands, the world behind me, no turn. said yes to Jesus, you've never said yes to Jesus. If you are here and you, you have, you've had perverted preferences, but you're ready to make Jesus your choice, I want you to come to this altar right now. I want to receive you right now. I want to say yes to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. Come to him right now. He will save you. He will save you. If you're here, come. No turning back. No, somebody's coming. God bless you. Let's pray together. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, say, do you need to recommit? Ask him. Wait for an answer. Ask, do you need to recommit? Look on the other side. Ask him, do you need to recommit? Look back at him and say, let's all do it. Let's all do it. Lift your hands, Father. I thank you for Jesus, that selfless life he lived, that righteous sacrifice, the perpetuation for our sins, and not only my sins, but the sins of the whole world. And may you pro be proclaimed from this church, always from this pulpit, that Jesus saves. I pray for those that are watching online father and maybe making that commitment if you're watching online and you're making that commitment i want you to say jesus save me just put that in the chat jesus save me now i'm making jesus my choice even if you're watching the rebroadcast put it in the chat we're going to reach out to you we're going to build a really help you build a relationship with jesus to follow have decided thank you Jesus to follow Jesus. no remain standing I want to open the doors of this church if you are here and you want to become a member of this Bible believing Christ centered church why is that so important if, if, if you if you watch today is th there's a lot of great good churches out there they, they do everything everything to not offend so they don't say his name they, they have they have relegated him just to some good man who did some good things 
but Jesus, God's only begotten son. We say his name here. Tell your neighbor we say his name here. I want you to come. You coming? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on. Beautiful. Beautiful. I put on Facebook this morning, what with me here over, that we're a family church. Tell somebody, say, we're a family church. He's the God of all nations. And we, we don't know who, who this young girl will be to us. 10, 15, 20 years from now. But you are her mother, right? Mom's bringing her and they're joining in to this church. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. What's, what's your name? Deja. Deja, Deja I, I, I believe you wouldn't have walked up here if you didn't think God was drawing you here. Do you, are you fully convinced God has connected you to this church? I, I am not the pastor. I'm the executive pastor. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means I do what he tells me to do. Like just now, he's telling me, keep going on. But our pastor is Bishop Mark Antonio Cooper. He's going to come in a moment to receive you. Our lovely first lady, his wife, Lady Joy Cooper. Here's what we ask you to do. We ask you to do one thing, and that's attend a new member's class. It's one class for about six hours. No, I'm kidding. It's about an hour time. Missionary Cicely Scott, come over here. Missionary Scott, she's going to collect your, your name and your information, and she will be working. Minister Michael Mapp, come on, sir. That's the team. Amen. What's the baby's name? Sahara. Sahara. Beautiful name. Beautiful family. Amen. In a moment, you're just going gonna to be bum-rushed by a bunch of people but we're a loving church, and that's the way we want to say welcome to the body of Christ and welcome to this church. Come on, URM, let's welcome her. Wow. Wow. Come on, come on. I need to see more, y'all. I need to see more, y'all. Y'all acting so sometime in the day. Come on, URM. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. do this for me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm going. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Clap your hands and sing it. If it had not been for Jesus, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that the Lord Stop singing and clap your hands. Come on.
Why don't you give the Lord a sanctified praise? A sanctified praise. A sanctified praise. God bless you. Show what sanctified look like. Let it go. Mother, we trying to leave. I can't tell them to be quiet. Well, come take a walk with me, mother. your seats. God bless you. Would you tell somebody, Lord's been good to me. Tell them, say, he's been real good. No, put a, put a preach in your voice and say, he's been real good. There shouldn't be any perverted preferences here. Hey! You shout like a sanctified woman. That's how it should look.
God bless you. I just want to ask you a question, Mother. Has he been good to you? So good to me, thank you. Maybe I can find somebody else that'll testify. Has he been good to you? He's been good. He's been good. Lord have mercy. Has he been good to you? He's been great. My God. You look like you look like you know the God you serve. I'm gonna ask you one time. And listen, don't you start nothing. Don't start nothing over here. I got one question to ask you. Has the Lord been good to you? I stood to do something, but it's totally impossible. Everybody just stand. Everybody stand. It was one second and we going right back to there as we going right back. We were scheduled on, on the calendar, a part of our church anniversary. There were two pew rallies we were supposed to have. One of them was today to work toward our goal. It's impossible. Jesus has come and turned over the table, so I'm not going to be able to set a table out and raise church anniversary money today. We'll do that at another time because there's a praise in the room. But I want, I want the praise that's in here to drive out every negative spirit. I want the praise in here to confuse and confound the wise. It's some folk that really believe you shouldn't even be praising like you praise it because they know the hell you've been through. They know what you've been through and they can't figure out why you're still praising. But grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, after all I've been through, tell them I still, tell them I still, I still have joy. Tell them I have joy. Got joy on the inside. The joy that the world didn't give. Joy that the world can't take away. Tell them I've got joy. Now, God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word we've received. And we thank you for the praise that's in this room. And I sense that some of this praise is a praise of expectation. Knowing that God is going to do just what he promised. And we thank you in advance. Come on. 
Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Thank you in advance for how you're going to make a way. Thank you in advance for the door that you're opening. Thank you in advance for the healing of my body. Thank you in advance for saving my family. Thank you in advance for protecting me and shielding me and keeping me. I thank you. In advance, what you're going to do, what you already done, as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, preparing to come back and celebrate this week what you've done for us. I ask that you keep us and bring us back ready to worship, ready to praise. We'll give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Listen, we got to go, but I want you one last time to grab your neighbor by the hand. Grab them, grab them like a sanctified grab. Grab their hand and squeeze their hand. Grab their hand and squeeze it. Now shake that hand. Shake that hand. Tell them I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Tell them I've got a reason to glorify the Lord. And I'm not going to wait until the battle is over. I'm a shout right now. Shout your way to your car if you can. When you get home, shout your way in the door. But y'all still here. I did dismiss y'all still here. I heard you, Pastor. I don't need a rock to cry out for me. I'll praise him myself. I just felt this in my spirit. I really want to let y'all go. But 
Sicily, come back, come back. Michael, come here. Joy, get here. Down there. Michael, get in the center. What I was seeing in the spirit, you all were shouting, but when you're shouting and dancing, I want you to put some feet down, but the Lord say every now and then turn. He said, because as you shout and as you dance, he's turning it in their favor. Turn, hey! If you know he's turning, run down here. Put some feet on it. Marlon, run down here real quick. Just dance and then turn. He's turning it. Everybody turn. He's turning it around. I just want to prophesy and speak in this atmosphere for every person that was obedient and turned. God was shifting some things in your life he turned it in your favor Satan tried to stack the deck against you but he turned it in your favor would you move out of your scene just hug two or three people and encourage them by faith and let them know it's alright now it's alright now